Hey Badri, good morning. Good morning, Ravi. Thanks for taking time out uh, for uh, some interaction with uh, our channel, Vogue. And uh, hi, uh, audience, uh, just for an introduction about Badrinath. Uh, Badrinath has uh, successfully retired now after 33 years of uh, you know, experience uh, as an employee, as an entrepreneur, and uh, now uh, he's here to share some success stories with us. Thanks, Badri, for joining in. No problems. Uh, so, Badri, where are you from, and you know, how did you start your uh, work life? Um, I was born in Mysore, mm -hmm. but I call myself a Hyderabadi, so I grew up here. Okay. And uh, until my graduation, I have a BA uh, from Nizam College in Hyderabad. Okay. Um, that's nice. Yeah, so I was in Hyderabad until I finished my graduation. Mm -hmm. And then I went for my business management uh, to Ahmedabad. Okay. Yeah, and uh, then in 1979, I graduated from there and went to Mumbai mm -hmm. for my first job, uh, which was in manufacturing, you know, on the materials management side. Okay. So I was there for five years mm -hmm. with, with Asian Paints, actually. Oh, wow. A great company to work for, yeah. And uh, then I became an entrepreneur. And oh. uh, from 1984 till 2005, I was that. Oh. So it's a long journey there, you know, about 21 years. And then I joined another large company mm -hmm. uh, for various reasons, which we can get into later, yeah. Uh, HCL Technologies, and I spent the rest of my career there. Okay. Yeah, and I retired in 2012, mm -hmm. end of 2012, when came back home to roost to Hyderabad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's really nice, uh, Badri. Yeah. How, how was your childhood and education? Any specific achievements, best moments of your childhood which you want to share uh, with us? Um, I had a very happy childhood because my parents uh, were very progressive. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we are four children and I'm the youngest and uh, all of us did well academically. But my parents were happiest when we did well outside academics okay so, yeah so we, we were into various things you know like uh, tennis cricket chess my mm -hmm. sister into music dance various things yeah so um i did best at chess oh yeah i, I wouldn't say i was a great chess player or anything like that it's all relative you know um but i was inter schools champion i was inter junior college champion i was captain of Nizam first chess team Okay. And later I was in fact in the IM chess team as well. Um, oh, that's nice. But uh, yeah, so other than that, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's any specific uh, stellar achievement that I, I can talk about. You know, I did well. That, that's about it. Yeah. Nice. So uh, you know, being the last kid, uh, were you the naughtiest, or uh, yeah, because uh, you um, know, it's observed that the the youngest ones are like uh, they get along uh, with everything and you know they, they uh, try to make their way out to make things happen through their parents or you know wherever they are um not i, I was naughty but not very naughty see the thing is if you have two older brothers um they rein your naughtiness in <laughs> <I know. laughs> okay. there's only so much you can do yeah Okay. And my parents uh, didn't interfere in inter-sibling squabbles, okay, so it had to find its own level. Right, yeah, yeah. I think that's the best approach to settle right, things. Right. Yeah, so, no, I don't, I don't think I was particularly naughty, but I, I, I wasn't a nerd either. Okay. Yeah. So, is it the same relationship now uh, with an, among your uh, siblings? Um, or it's more evolved now? With it, yeah, it evolves over time, you know. Uh, there's sometimes a little bit of um, formality creeps in, which where none existed in the past. But uh, but we are we are still very close. Yeah. Okay, great. Now, uh, Badri, would you like to share more details about your startup journey? Because I think you've spent a lot of time. You know, most of your years out of thirty-three years was in startup journey. So, can can you give us more details about it? Yeah. Um, now, to begin with, I want to tell you that the very fact that 
I cease to be an entrepreneur after 21 years means it, it isn't an unqualified success story or anything like that. Okay, so you're not listening to a great success story, but you're listening to a very interesting story. Yeah, that's what we are uh, keen yeah, in. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I quit Asian Paints. Mm -hmm. uh, now, as I said, I was in the materials uh, department and Asian Paints was a highly computerized company even in those days when people were doing only um, payroll and accounting. Asian right. Prince was doing things like uh, sales forecasting, production planning, you know, mm -hmm. inventory control, all that kind of thing, distribution on computers. Okay. Yeah. So, um, as a user of computers, there was there were occasions when uh, I couldn't get what I wanted from the systems department, mm -hmm. and uh, every time I couldn't get what I wanted, I said I'll do it myself. Okay, so right. while while I was a user of computer system, I started developing systems, and I got great support from my bosses. And that's what made, made Asian Paints very special. Nobody okay. says you're in materials; uh, it's not your job to create systems. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, so, so I, was I, doing, I was doing that, mm -hmm. and the, my last year in Asian Paints, I was actually formally in systems. Oh. Yeah. Right. They, they said, if you like it so much, then why don't you go there? Okay. So, which I did. And then I left. And uh, the, the day I, I left without a job. Okay. okay. Mm. So, I, I just wanted some time to discover what I wanted to do. Mm. But the very next day, after I quit, somebody c comes to me and says that we have this uh, IT project. Um, at uh, Crompton Greeks in Nasik. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you know, the paints is different from switch gears. Okay. But uh, they said that uh, we are looking for somebody to spearhead the project in Nasik. And you know, I was not married. I was a bachelor staying in Bombay. It made no difference to me whether I was in Bombay or in Nasik. So I took on that uh, challenge. So I okay. became an entrepreneur by accident because I hadn't, I hadn't figured out that I wanted to be that. Mm -hmm. Okay, at that point in time. It's like immense pleasure, uh, pleasure which you get uh, as soon as you see that, hey, people are, uh, you know, looking for something like me. I mean, somebody like me who can actually do it and that confidence within you saying that, yes, I can do it. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, the, the guy who uh, gave me this assignment was himself an ex-Asian Paints guy, uh, much senior to me. And he was in systems and uh, he then set up his own software company and he, he got this assignment at uh, Crompton Reeves in Nasik. Okay. okay. Um, but for him to execute it there was, was a challenge. Um, so he wanted somebody that he could trust, who, somebody who, who he knew d deliver. Okay, because there were, the timelines were fairly uh, you know, tight. For okay. Them. Yeah, it was a materials requirement planning system, but in a totally different kind of uh, industry from mm -hmm. paints. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Even the the technology was totally different. You know, engineering area is more like chemicals and mm -hmm. so so he knew me. Okay. So he he saw me both when I was on the system, uh, material side and on the system side. So he thought I was probably the right person to do it. So that's how I got into it. And uh, so I delivered. Okay. Right. On that, and then I, they gave me an assignment directly, mm -hmm. and I delivered that as well. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So after that, you know, I came back to Bombay mm -hmm. with nothing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I had a success story behind me, mm -hmm. but no business. So I decided to uh, take up a uh, what 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 is called a shared business center. Mm -hmm. So I had a 40 square feet room in Nar Nariman Point. Okay. okay. So the address was very good. Okay. Okay. Nariman Point at that time was the place to be in, you know, from, from a business point of view. And uh, so I had secretarial services and everything. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. So, and this was so I had a card which said Nariman Point. Okay. Oh, wow. And yeah. this was in which year? This was 1986. Oh. Yeah. For 84 to 86, I was in Nasik. Okay, so okay, right. So 
So I set up uh, something called um, login systems mm -hmm. consultants. Okay, and uh, started operating from there and uh, started doing any kind of assignment that came my way. And I wasn't particular about the domain. Okay. So any, anything that would help me pay the rent for, the, for my business center and feed me was what I was doing. Um, and then I took a couple of uh, employees as well, mm -hmm. programmers, okay. so that I could use my time better. But I realized that uh, if I were to do both business acquisition and supervise execution, mm -hmm. I wasn't going to go anywhere. Okay. Okay. So that's when I decided to uh, invite partners in. Okay. So some close friends joined me. Mm -hmm. First one, then a few years later, two more. Okay. So that's how we grew. And uh, um, we started doing a lot of work for ad agencies. So, mm -hmm. and we, we even had the core of a productized solution for ad agencies for the, on the accounting side. Okay. But parallelly, we started doing work for banks. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that we did on a customized basis, uh, we felt had potential to be a product. Okay. Which could be, you know, configured by different customers. So you, you're not doing tailor-made for each customer. You're just configuring for different customers. And uh, this, this was at a time when not too many products were there in uh, Indian IT space. Okay. okay. Um, and this was in a very specialized area. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is called the treasury uh, part of a bank. Okay. So, so this, this is not a solution that sells hundreds for a bank. Okay. It's not like a branch automation solution. In, in those days, there was no core banking system f for banks. Okay. Where a single large system handles even the multiple branches. Uh, yeah, multiple branches. There were there were there were branch automation systems which were hooked to a central server and that kind of thing. So uh, there were multiple systems uh, involved in the automation of a bank. Okay. But our solution was used just in one place in a bank. Okay. Which, okay. which typically for all Indian banks was in Mumbai. Right. Yeah. The Treasury Department of most banks was located in Mumbai. Okay. With a few exceptions. And Treasury handles uh, procurement? No, 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 no. See, if you look at it like this, a bank has, a typical bank has various uh, departments, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's the lending part of the bank. Right. So that part of the bank uh, is net uh, funds negative because its okay. job is to lend out funds. Right. Then there is the deposit taking part of the bank. Mm -hmm. which is net funds positive because his job is to bring in funds. Right. Okay. And regulations say that you can't lend out everything that you bring in. Okay. Yeah. You have to keep a buffer. Hmm. Okay. A reserve. And part of the reserve can be invested in government securities. In okay. effect, you are lending to the government there. Right. If you buy a government security, you are in effect lending to the government. But it's considered a very safe loan. Okay. Because you, the government will never default, whereas your uh, l uh, customers to whom you lend could Might. default, could default Might, on yeah. that loan. Okay, so therefore, uh, that's that's allowed. Okay, and uh, part of it you keep in cash, hmm. right? So, we, therefore, this whole thing of how do you de deploy the excess of deposits over loans, uh, then. You've, you've made profits over the years, so you have retained earnings as well. So how do you deploy the bank's own uh, funds? Okay. Right? So all this is the job of treasury. And okay. therefore, this is something that is centralized. You need a specialized group of uh, people who people. are good at investment. So you invest in government securities, you uh, do short-term lending and borrowing, one bank to another, mm -hmm. okay, interbank transactions, what they call okay. call money. It could be uh, overnight typically, or it can be over shorter durations. You invest in treasury bills, okay. government treasury bills, which mm -hmm. are usually uh, bills, uh, securities that mature uh, within a year. Uh, okay. So, the, and then you 
banks also do what is called trade finance. Okay. Okay. Um, they support the activities of importers and exporters, mm -hmm. and that involves foreign exchange. Yes. Because the bank needs to sell and buy foreign exchange. You buy foreign exchange from exporters. Mm -hmm. Sell foreign exchange to importers. Right. Uh, so this is the forex part of the bank, and in addition, they take speculative positions in the forex market. So all this is done by the treasury, treasury. department, right? right? And so we had initially disparate solutions for these various, um, you know, lines of uh, investment. Yes. So we had these disparate solutions, and uh, by 1993, we became market leaders. Oh wow! In that, in that space, um, but these were all you know old Fox Pro, Fox Base kind of uh, technologies, mm -hmm. and they were not talking to each other. Okay. Whereas, uh, when you look at the way a Treasury looks at this whole space, they look mm -hmm. at it holistically. There's a pool of funds, and where do you deploy it? Okay. Okay. Yeah, it could be in government securities. It could be in uh, interbank lending. Mm -hmm. you, you could uh, use your funds. Uh, on the foreign exchange side, okay. right. So you, you don't look at it in separate compartments, uh, whereas our solutions was like that. Okay. So we felt we could add more value to our customers if we had an integrated solution. Then we could give, give an overall view of funds and uh, you know uh, cost of funds and things like that. Okay. Um, so um, we wanted to come up with a new integrated treasury. Mm -hmm system um, for which we needed money okay so now in those days uh, it wasn't easy to get uh, uh, risk capital mm -hmm. inside okay there were very few avenues to do that we looked around mm -hmm. um, for some time we, we couldn't find uh, anything which was you know from a source where they would invest and then exit okay okay so finally we got funds from uh, a non-banking finance company mm -hmm. uh, where there was no exit kind of thing and we actually lost control. Okay. The, the group of us who were running this software company, we had lost control to the person who was running that non-banking company, but we got the uh, funds, funds okay. that we needed for this. Mm -hmm. um, so, and now this had to be developed. It was a major project. Okay. And um, I was tasked with developing it. Hmm. But doing it in Mumbai was very expensive because we had to enlarge the team. Okay. By then we had something like 10 people. Okay. But we needed at least 40, 50. Mm -hmm. So running such a team in Mumbai would have been very expensive. So we moved to Chennai. That okay. is the, the, the customer support and marketing still remain in Mumbai. Okay. But the development, development moved to, to Chennai. Okay. Chennai. Um, I took a large three-bedroom house, mm -hmm. and uh, everything other than the loo was used to, you know, put, put terminals okay. and house people. Yeah. So, so that was fun. Okay, we um, we got we, you know we 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 were doing things on, on a fairly big time kind of scale. You know, we went public by the way around oh. that time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Th this non-banking finance company um, acquired a, a defunct listed company mm -hmm. and then we did a, a further offering from that listed company using okay. using the attractiveness of a software Which part of it. Yeah, yeah earlier it was just NBFC you know, uh, there was a software wing to it so we raised money and we raised money again a few mm -hmm. years later okay so and uh, so that funded this whole project, project. and all subsequent projects. Um, so by this was in 1994 when I moved to Chennai, mm -hmm. and by 1996 we had uh, the first uh, solution out integrated, and uh, within a few years we were market leaders again with this integrated solution, and we were competing now with the big boys. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And this was uh, during for like two years is where you struggled to build this particular platform. Yeah, two years. Yes. Yeah. We we also built 
using the same engine, mm -hmm. uh, a solution for mutual funds. Okay. okay. Yeah. That perhaps was a mistake mm -hmm. be because uh, um, having some commonalities between two different uh, domains uh, is not exactly the only justification for getting into something simultaneously. Right. There is a certain loss of focus there. Okay. So one of the things that you need to do as an entrepreneur mm -hmm. is to stay focused. Just because something can be done doesn't mean it should be done. Right. Okay. Um, so any, anyway, that it's not that we failed on the mutual fund side. We, we had a lot of customers there as well. Okay. Um, but coming back to the treasury story. So we, we were competing with the big boys in you know, Infosys, TCS and all that. We were winning orders against them. Okay. Yeah. And uh, by the end of the 1990s, in fact, we partnered with Infosys mm -hmm. and we took the solution to uh, several countries outside India, all em emerging markets. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Kenya, Nigeria, Mauritius, Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. So um, it was for those times, it was a fairly, um, you know, satisfying success story from the, from the business point of view. Right. But we were not making too much money. Uh, and the reason was that we had a lot of problem retaining our employees. Employees, yeah. The this is a highly domain uh, uh, intensive line of business. Even our programmers knew a lot of the, the related domain. Okay. And uh, so they were very sought after by larger companies. Hmm. And we were in an India focused business. Our customers were paying us in rupees. And right. uh, there's, at that time, there was only so much you could charge for a solution like this. By the way, we are, our price points went up dramatically. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, our first sale was something of the order of, uh, I would say, 25, 30 lakhs. Mm -hmm. And finally, we went up to two crores for it. For the same platform? For the, yeah. Well, of course, of it improved course, over yeah, time. It evolved yeah. with a lot yeah, of features. Yeah. And but despite that, we were always uh, running faster and faster to stay in the same place. Because nice. uh, the moment we trained a bunch of people, mm -hmm. um, they would be uh, picked up by these larger companies who could offer them, uh, you know, US postings, UK postings, Australia postings. Right, yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, dollar salaries. Mm, yes. Uh, so, so that's been their dream yeah. to, you know, move to the US. And yeah. So uh, our guys used to be. Uh, Poached while they were sitting in our office, they would get calls and all that. Yeah. Oh. Um, some of them really stuck with us, and they were, you know, they were really great guys. You know, they, in spite of all these inducements, mm -hmm. for a long time they remained with us, in spite of the opportunities they, that they had. Um, we also could have done a better job retaining these people because we were listed. Mm -hmm. Uh, we could have offered them stock options and things like that, but b because uh, our burn of cash was very high uh, related to our revenues, okay, we we weren't doing very well financially. So the stock option, even if given, uh, wouldn't have been very attractive. Attractive for them, yeah. Yeah. So, so this is a situation where you're a market leader substantial market leader, okay, we had a huge share of the market and yet okay. you were not making too much money. money. Yeah. So it was, it was a two dimensional kind of thing. Uh, satisfaction on one side that you mm -hmm. could do this, which nobody else had done. But on the other hand, you were not making too much. Right. Yeah. So, but the business was sustainable. There were opportunities which were knocking your door because we were you were the only uh, experts in this domain. We were not the only ones. Okay, the TCS had their own uh, team, okay. and they all had huge financial services businesses. It's it's not that they lacked the domain knowledge or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's just that they did not bring together a product a shrink rack product, if you want to call it that, or an application that could compete with what we have. 
Okay. Yeah. But they they suddenly, including the company that I joined, HC Technology, had a very strong financial services uh, portfolio. Yeah, yeah, right. So it's, it's just that they, they were making too much money doing services. Okay. Yeah. And they, some of them did have product solutions. You know, they had core banking systems, Infosys, for instance, that, that mm-hmm. you know, TCS had. So they they were in, into the product space, but the product revenue was a very small part of their overall revenue. Revenues. Yeah. Right. So so we were we were well known in the Indian market, mm-hmm. but uh, there was this darker side to the business, which is that it wasn't doing very well financially. So. Uh, after 21 years of doing it, okay, I decided to to join the enemy, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what what made you uh, take this decision? I mean, did you did you uh, uh, hand over this particular company? Did you ask your partners to manage this particular company to, before coming out, or uh, you know how how was uh, and what made you uh, take this decision? No, but by that time I was just one of five six people running the company. Okay, and as as you, I mentioned earlier, we had lost control to somebody else. So uh, the CEO was somebody else. So right. So there was nothing to hand over. Okay. Yeah. So the people were there. Um, s- some of us decided to exit. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we still had our shares in the company for whatever it was worth. Okay. But we exited, and. Uh, uh, see, the, the, that was the time when my kids had to go to college, mm-hmm. just before they uh, had to go to college. And um, uh, they had got the older uh, son, mm-hmm. got into Singapore. Okay. So, so I had to pay um, Singapore fees with uh, rupee income. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so I needed a I needed study, uh, study income. Uh, income. Yeah, and uh, so I joined HCL Technologies, and uh, that personally put me back on a uh, better position financially. And um, uh, so that was the main motivation. Here. Finally, I started looking at family. If you want to uh, you know, yeah. look at it that way. Yeah, but during this particular journey, how, yeah. how much time were you able to spend? You know, because I'm sure you were in a mission to you know make. Uh, the development unit in Chennai successful, you know, ensure the projects are delivered on timeline. So how was, how much time were you spending uh, in a day uh, at work and, uh, you know, your yeah. family? I used, work was all consuming. I, right. I, I was there for, you know, 10, 12 hour work days were very common. Working weekends was very common. Okay. Yeah. Um, Traveling. Yeah, I had to travel also. It wasn't that I was involved only in development. I was also involved in the sales cycle. Okay. okay. Uh, what they call the pre-sales thing, mm-hmm. where you go and pitch your solution. Um, so I, I was involved in that. So I was traveling to Mumbai. I was traveling to other countries. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was out of Chennai quite a bit. Okay. In fact, for two years, I used to come home only on weekends. Mm-hmm. Okay. Otherwise, I was in Mumbai. Okay. Or elsewhere. So that uh, see this whole thing of work-life balance. You have to look at it um, in two different ways. Um, one is from a satisfaction point of view. I really enjoyed what I was doing. So from that point of view, I, I had good balance. Right. I wasn't doing anything that I disliked. Right. But there's this other thing of, you know, what else are you doing? Mm-hmm. Um, and particularly, what else are you doing with your family? Uh, there, I think, there was a, a fair bit of imbalance. Okay. I, by the time I would come back, come back home, my kids, when they were little, they would be asleep. Right. Yeah. But I tried to manage, even within that, you know, like... Um, I would spend time with them in the morning when they got up and uh, um, 
I would play with them on the weekends that I did take. I would play with them, mm-hmm. all that. Um, but and we we did take vacations. I've always taken vacations in life. Okay, yeah, yeah. that that's a good point. Uh, yeah. So, but I would say that the balance was good from a um, work satisfaction point of view, mm-hmm. but the balance wasn't very good when it, uh, when you look at lifestyle and you know the other interests that one can pursue in life. Yeah. Okay. So now, now that's a you know great story of startup which you've uh, showcased. So out of these other two, uh, I mean four uh, members who joined, uh, like your friends and family right. members. Right. So I mean, uh, if not names, uh, can you tell us what they contributed? Like you were taking care of uh, the production development and uh, the sales part. So how were they? I mean, uh, you you basically infused them uh, because you needed help. Right. You didn't, you know, you couldn't just do yeah. development and also do sales development. So how? Yeah, they came in as equals. You know, it, it wasn't that you know I was some kind of boss or anything like that. They came in as equals. Right. Uh, so there was one guy was looking after the business acquisition, mm-hmm. and by over the, over a period of time, we acquired a small services business as well. Okay. Uh, we, because we needed a different pattern of cash flows to supplement uh, the very lumpy and uh, uh, you know unpredictable cash flows of the product business. So you needed something more regular. Okay. So we had a services business. So there were one of them was looking after the services. Okay. Uh, business. That's nice. Um, there was one guy who was looking at strategic things. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, he was the one, for instance, who brought in this uh, non-banking finance company guy when we needed money. Right. Okay. Um, and he would also be involved in the business acquisition part of it. And then there was a CEO who, who was from the non-banking finance non-banking. company. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it was a very um, capable team. but. Uh, in hindsight, I felt that we were very top heavy. Mm. Okay. Um, we probably would have done better if there were fewer of us at, at that level, and we probably we needed better, um, you know, uh, manning at the mid, at the middle management level. Okay. Um, now the the thing was we were willing to pay, but. We were competing with all these large companies at the time when you know the Y2K thing was going on, the dot-com boom was happening. Right. So th- there was no way we could attract the best talent. Mm-hmm. The, in the early days, we could attract engineers from Anna University and all that. Okay. Yeah, we even got one guy from IIT and uh, we're a couple from IIMs. Okay. Yeah, but as time progressed, we couldn't attract those kinds of people. But we got some good guys. We believed in uh, in-house training, so we we were very successful at uh, training people in the domain that we were in. Uh, but you know, re- retention was always a problem. Yeah, a yeah, and when you ran into cash flow problems and all that, you were not necessarily paying people on time. Okay. Okay. So all all these were uh, pressures that added uh, to the problem of retention. Okay. Yeah. So, um, what so, the, so the engineering part of the solution mm-hmm. could have been better if we had more experienced uh, programmers. We mostly go, got freshers. Okay. So even on the technical side, we didn't have people who could uh, engineer the product better. So our implementations tended to uh, drag. Okay. So it took we, more time than they took more time than uh, anticipated. Our customers were very supportive because the, they really saw value in the solution. So they were very supportive. Uh, that's how we managed to you know do what we did. But uh, the longer the implementation, the more the burn of yes cash. What was your uh, you know highest number of employees uh, in this particular team you had? Um, including you services guys? about 150. Wow. That that's a large scale yeah. startup. I'm not <laughs> counting the NBFC part of it. Okay, mm-hmm. There's a software part of it. Yeah. 
okay that's that's a good i mean this is one good thing yeah. about uh, entrepreneurship where you actually get to hire people and you know give uh, livelihood to so many people as an individual company so right that, that's a great journey right so uh, any time you felt that uh, you know it's time to quit i think uh, i mean during this journey i mean not not the end of it but during this journey and you know your uh, partners said badri let's do it i think there's still some opportunity during this cash crunch um towards the end yes mm-hmm. i s- started seriously thinking about exiting but it's very difficult to exit uh, something that you've been with for 21 years yeah okay. especially you know you, yeah. you've been the main founder yeah. for it so right so uh, it takes a lot of uh, you know grit and determination to do it and you know you you're not in the mainstream of uh, a career for people with my background right um so after 21 years you move from a small company to a large company you have to make certain uh, compromises mm-hmm. okay uh, fortunately for me uh, i didn't have to make too too many compromises when i joined hcl they they okay. gave me a, what i felt was a, a good deal mm-hmm. given the circumstances and uh, so and by then i had to think of larger things so uh, it wasn't just me and my you know love for what i was doing okay there, there was a the family and what needed to be done there okay yeah so uh, towards the end it was just a question of when okay not whether okay but i would say for the first uh, 17 18 years mm mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't have even thought of it. Right. Because you know you had that adrenaline of doing what you were doing. That was your baby. So. Yeah. Our baby, you know, yeah. group of people who were yeah. So we were all uh, you know similarly placed, you know, mm-hmm. whatever I went through is something that the others also went through. Right. But yeah, that that's an awesome journey. So Uh, any time after joining hcl you know you had thoughts that hey this solution i mean because your your journey started as a user you felt that you know the customer needs or an employee needs these solutions uh, and this is missing in the current platform and that's how you started your journey right, right. so after joining I, hcl i needed that yeah it's not, it's which you needed, needed as yeah i needed that yeah right so you know any time after joining hcl you said okay this is missing i think you know we, uh, we should start again or, in, or as a startup i think i should start again did, did you get such thoughts uh no no okay. i i i knew that see when i when i joined hcl i knew that i would be retiring at the age of 55 my appointment letter said that <laughs> okay yeah so i knew that i would retire at that age mm-hmm. and uh, i wanted to do what i am now doing okay right uh, well, you know have time for mys- myself and mm-hmm. so uh um, hcl um was very good to me okay um and uh i tried to do um you know what i could to ma- make an impact um in a services business by bringing in what i would call some um Uh, value added thinking okay okay uh, so apart from running the show whatever sh- was interested to me and mm-hmm. I, i tried to bring in ideas and things like that okay. um but uh, at the end of the day uh, it is a very successful services business All right um, um it has is very strong in technology and the, the range of services they see offers is vast um it's got some fantastic people Okay, okay that's that's when i really met some very good uh, pe- uh, technology people and uh, uh, subject matter experts okay. yeah, when you are in a small company you you are in your own world okay true uh, yeah. i i met some very capable pe- people in hcl yeah yeah so what what was unique about hcl culture like every organization has a specific culture which they drive you know as a team as a company so what was really unique about uh, hcl where you decided to retire in the same company hcl uh, gives you a lot of responsibilities okay mm-hmm. and backs you 
Okay. Yeah. Um, they want people to own things, mm-hmm. plunge into things. Um, it's it, it was it's, it was also a company where an ex entrepreneur would feel comfortable. Hmm. Yeah. Um, my boss himself was an ex entrepreneur. Okay. Okay. So you you don't feel um, that you know you you've you've come in as as a loser. Mm-hmm. You understand. So it's. It's a company that recognizes that when you're in, in the entrepreneurial stream, there can be success, there can be failures, and, you, and those are uh, venture successes and failures, not person successes Perfect. and f- failures. Okay, so uh, there were a lot of ex-entrepreneurs in XC. I wasn't the only one. Okay. Yeah. And that's nice to know. Yeah. Okay. So, so, good company too. I, I didn't have anything else to compare because that was the only other company that I worked for in the technology. So I worked only for three companies, Asian Brains, my own company, and then HCL. Yeah. That's good. So uh, with this particular journey, you had, uh, you know, ups and downs uh, in your own startup. You know, uh, do you have any suggestions for the current startup founders, you know, who basically either already, you know, uh, building a company, building their own idea right. or trying to do it? So do you have any specific suggestions for them? Well, if they want to listen to something from me, I don't mind sharing my thoughts on that. Yeah, um, see, so for one thing, you if you if you want to be an entrepreneur you obviously have some kind of business idea right. so you need to research your business idea very well mm-hmm. um, for instance what is the problem that you are trying to solve mm-hmm. who are the people who want the problem to be solved are, are there adequate number of people who want such a problem to be solved which would make business sense for you mm-hmm. then is your idea going to solve the problem in a differentiated way or are you going to be a me too kind of uh, you know startup okay. i think given what is happening in the startup space um, well there are me too companies which are also success successes it is better to be in what they call the blue ocean right. where there are few p- people playing so, and, and even if there are others, if you are able to differentiate your solution, then mm-hmm. you have a, a unique selling proposition. Um, and then, there, there are two things. One is that you, you need to have obvious, obviously you need a lot of passion to be successful as an entrepreneur. You need to believe in yourself. You need to believe in what you're doing and all that. Then there's a second part, which is execution. Mm. Okay, execution is, the thing ultimately. You can have great ideas, and, uh, you can have a great design also, right. but you may not be executing well. And um, over a period of time, you can't do everything by yourself. So you need a great team which shares these uh, values that there has to be passion and there has to be excellence in execution. Um, so the, these are the things that I would say any startup founder needs to look at uh, and and going f- from you know my my own experience uh, as far as possible don't lose control of your business if you need funds get it from somebody who would add value to your business uh, who would eventually exit and leave you with a value added business rather than somebody who um, who is take, taking over your business, you know? Um, so that, that, that is better. Not, not that what we did was bad, but th- this is better. Yeah, based on your experience, yeah. you're saying, yeah, yeah. you know, this is, this yeah. is what it does. No, no, Because if you are a super success, then your, uh, the upside is much more if you, if you have a significant stake in your own business. Right. So uh, now the founders have to like wear multiple hats, like they have to take care of not only uh, the app or, you know, the idea which they develop, they also have to 
you know wear a hat of a hr take care of their employees uh, you know wear a hat of sales where they have to promote it so do you feel that the founder should be in line of wearing all the hats like where they are multitasking and they are really good at all of these or do you think that they should uh, uh, hire people who should uh, you know for individual verticals like sales marketing you know inside sales then uh, you have uh, hr once See, if you're a mom and pop shop you can do everything yourself okay right um many small startups mm-hmm. do uh, end up doing everything themselves but over a period of time you absolutely need to have a team uh, for the simple reason that everybody including yourself brings a certain specific value into the business right and your value is not necessarily doing all those things you can have oversight of all those areas as a ceo but right but on the operational side mm-hmm. you need people to look after those areas so that you can concentrate on doing what you do best so uh you you shouldn't get into what i would call a startup business and i'm now differentiating from mom and pop businesses okay which can also be startups yeah. okay uh if you shouldn't even get into business if your dream is not to grow big and you can't grow big without uh you know you can't scale without uh, delegating delegating without delegating. a team yeah okay so uh what's your experience uh, or what are your thoughts about uh, multiple industries going down now you know a lot of uh, industries including telecom you know you have auto industries banking a lot of the downsizing happening uh so any any thoughts on that you know what is the message you want to pass on for people uh, who want to get into uh, working with corporates might not be startups at this point is more for uh people who are looking for working for a company where the industries are really going down see i'm not much of an industry watcher these days but uh top of mind see downsizing is different from industries going down okay downsizing can be cyclical mm-hmm. okay every industry goes through ups and downs in its business and in in fact it's good to respond to that so mm-hmm. you, you know if if you are going through a downtrend for well, it companies do it all the time you know they downsize when the going is bad and then start recruiting heavily when the going is good yeah and the it services companies recession yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah n- not necessarily a recession even if your growth rate is positive but lower than what it was okay in order to mean maintain your margins and all that you need to uh, look at your costs so if your revenues are not growing as fast as before you need to bring your costs down and uh, typically in businesses where manpower is a significant component of the cost they would downsize mm-hmm. uh, so th- this is to be distinguished from industries which have lost their salience okay, okay. so the whole line of business Uh, is no longer relevant uh, all right for instance if there was a time when people were offering data entry services mm. that yes. you know for obvious reasons uh, had its you know sell by date and if you are in that kind of business and you were watching what is happening in the wider world where people were uh, entering the at, uh, at the point of creation of data itself the data is captured yes right mm. then you don't need somebody else to enter the data downstream so uh, somebody running such a business should see the writing on the wall and exit while the going is good so uh, that's that's a very you know basic example there are some businesses that uh, stand the test of time mm-hmm. uh, for for instance if you are a barber catering to men what you're do- doing today and how you are doing it it's not much different from how it was done 100 years back yes but if you are uh, let's say running a diagnostics lab mm-hmm. for instance uh, how these tests were being done Early. let's say 30 years back where you it was uh, you know in the, at the back end it was like a chemistry lab right all the samples were uh, being processed um, in test tubes and you know people were adding 
reagents and things like that uh, in order to uh, come up with the uh, test results. Right. Now there are machines which do all that. So it's the same business, but the way you're doing it has completely is, changed. Is, yeah. Is, so you have to now, you have, if you are in that business, you have to read that and you have to make those investments. You can't run the same business the old way. So, um, so businesses die, um, and entire industry can die, mm. but uh, that is to be distinguished from downsizing. So if you are joining a company to answer your question, you got to uh, satisfy yourself that this is a company which has a future, but which is temporarily uh, downsizing yeah. and you are lucky enough to get in while they are downsizing. Okay. In fact, it's a good time to get into a company which is downsizing, which means that you have some special, special skills, skills that they want. That's okay. true. If you're yeah, still yeah, existing, yeah. that means that you're, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, contributing to the company. You're not likely to face the axe tomorrow because they're hiring you when they're downsizing. Okay. Right. So, um, so I, I think you need to, uh, you know, watch out where you want to work. And if it's a sunset industry, mm -hmm. okay, you don't want to join, uh, you know, as, especially early in your career, you don't want to do that. Got it. And uh, if you are given an opportunity in doing CSR activity, I think you are also part of uh, Rotary Club. Uh, what would be your priority and uh, what project would you choose if you are given a chance that, hey, there's funding as Badri, we want you to drive this particular project. What would be your priority? Um, education, especially science education uh, in government schools. Mm -hmm where they don't have adequate uh, teaching staff to teach well enough mm -hmm. f for the modern world. Mm -hmm. So if there's some way we can bring in money to supplement the kind of education children are getting in government schools, mm -hmm. uh, that will be something that uh, I would uh, enjoy being a part of. What, what are the best moments uh, of your career or life? You know, you want to share something about that? Um, difficult question to answer. The real satisfying moments are, you know, when you roll a solution out mm -hmm. and it comes out the way you wanted it and it comes out nearly on time. Right. Um, so then you feel satisfied. Uh, you feel very satisfied when your customer is using your solution mm -hmm. and uh, you know, derives value from it. So when you go and visit a customer's site and you see people sitting at terminals using your solution, you feel good. And yeah, and especially when we, we were dealing with very large customers. You know, we were dealing with foreign banks. Bank of America was our customer, Citibank was our customer, Standard Chartered Bank at various stages. So, and, and large Indian banks, uh, Indian private banks. So across the spectrum. So th these are not easy customers to satisfy. So when they right. were using your solution, you... And uh, they're happy and then yeah, they respect yeah. you. The way they see you when you enter their office, right, I think Right, that. right, right. So that gives you satisfaction. And when one customer endorses you when you're trying to uh, acquire another customer, it, that used to happen all the time. Yes. We, used to, we used to give so customer references. references. Yeah, yeah, most of our wins involved uh, uh, customer references. Mm -hmm. So that would give you satisfaction. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. So, Badri, what's your work-life mantra? I mean, any message you want to pass on for the current generation, millennials on, you know, the work-life mantra which might work for them? What, what's your suggestion on that? You know, I see two, my two sons, uh, the way they're uh, handling their careers. Mm -hmm. um, they have a much better work-life balance than I had. Um, they're not married, either of them. Um, but they spend a lot of time doing things that they love. At the okay. same time, they are, uh, you know, they are in demanding careers and they are doing well in those. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think actually the younger generation understands work-life balance much better than somebody from my generation. So um, it's really not something that uh, you know I can talk about. Uh, in a credible way, but mm -hmm. you know, one can always air one's thoughts. Uh, one thing is, 
well, there's no constant work life balance that you want to achieve it depends on the stage of your career right so in the early days when you want to make a career for yourself and you don't have too many responsibilities um you go for it okay do whatever it takes to get on to the kind of career track you want to be in mm-hmm. uh, it may not necessarily be the fast track okay if if you are very happy um uh, not being on the fast track then make those choices but if you want to be on the fast track then this is the time to give everything that you want and do something that you love so this is a stage where work life balance uh, is not between work and recreation but between work and the enjoyment you derive from that work so okay. so, yeah. so if you're not enjoying what you're doing then even less amount of work is doesn't make sense it's better to change your job to do something yeah. that you enjoy doing but as time progresses uh, and you're you know midway through your career and you have a family and all that um uh, try and make time for uh being with them um uh, start developing interest for yourself and make time for those lot lot of companies these days are very supportive of all this yes yeah so there when we were young uh companies were not very supportive of this kind of thing but now companies are so you you should uh, uh take advantage of that for instance physical fitness is a very important aspect of work life balance right now companies exactly. have gyms inside them don't fail to use those things it it, it also makes you more creative if you peg away all the time you're uh, you're not going to come up with uh, uh, creative solutions as when you step away from what you're doing go to the gym burn a few calories and it, a lot of good ideas would come to me when i would be walking by myself yes i also yeah. like that so uh, physical fitness is something that one should be pursuing at all stages of one's career in different ways um so don't uh work very hard only to please your boss yes work hard only if the task demands it mm-hmm. all of us go through moments when you know there's a demanding task and you're not necessarily enjoying every moment of it but the job needs to be done and you do it so if you look at specific tasks you might not always be enjoying doing what you do but over a period of time you shouldn't be doing things that you're not enjoying because then your passion will die so you should pursue your passion that's what i would say thank you padri that that's a lot of insights uh, thanks for taking time out of this and uh, i I strongly feel that this video will have uh, a lot of impact a lot of learning for a lot of uh, entrepreneurs especially who wants to uh, build their career in IT financial domain because your solution was like just awesome you know you were just not thinking about uh, creating a front end for uh, the banking sector but treasury i mean and we also learned a lot about uh, what i mean i personally learned a lot about you know what it actually uh means you know what goes behind uh, the banking sector so thanks a lot padri welcome